This is Catholic Challenge, a quiz show that tests your knowledge of the Catholic faith. From altar to zealot and amice to wimple, we've got the questions to test your mettle. Take up your shield and raise your sword. It's time to stand firm in the glory of the Lord. Are you up to the challenge? Catholic Challenge 2.0 is here. Are you ready? And now, here is your host, Barbara G. Hello and welcome to Catholic Challenge 2.0, an exclusive production of the Living Bread Radio Network. I'm your host, Barbara G., and with me today is my co-host, PJ Chavez. Hey, PJ, how are you? Hey, Barbara, fantastic, thanks. Wonderful. Listeners, we're going to spend the next 30 minutes testing your knowledge of the Catholic faith. I hope you're up to the challenge. PJ, let's give our listeners the rules. All right, well, here are the rules. We will ask 10 multiple choice questions in the first three rounds. Each correct answer is worth 10 points. For classroom, homeschooling, or team play, you can download our free scoring sheet at livingbreadradio.com. Now the fourth and final round is the challenge round. This round increases in difficulty because no multiple choice answers will be provided, and each correct answer in that round will be worth 30 points. Okay, thanks, PJ. Thank you. All right, listeners, are you ready? Let's get started. Round one begins right now. Question number one. How many psalms are there in the book of Psalms in the Old Testament? 150, 100, or 102? And the answer is 150. The psalms were written by King David and more than seven other authors, including five individuals and two families who wrote psalms over the centuries. Question number two. What is the last day to eat well before the Lenten fasting period called? Ash Wednesday, Triduum, or Mardi Gras? And the answer is Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is the French term for Fat Tuesday. Question number three. Who created the first Christmas crib, also known as a creche? Mary Magdalene, St. Francis of Assisi, or St. John? And the answer is St. Francis of Assisi. By order of St. Francis, the manger had been so arranged that Christmas Mass was celebrated on it. Question number four, true or false? Catholics believe that reincarnation is only for those who need more time to get cleansed in preparation for heaven. And the answer is false. Reincarnation is not an accepted Catholic belief. Question number five, what was St. Paul's occupation? A scribe? a tent maker, or a fisherman? And the answer is a tent maker. From Acts chapter 18, verses 2 and 3, Paul went to see Aquila and Priscilla, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and they worked. For by trade, they were tent makers. Question number six. Which was the first American colony to pass a law mandating religious tolerance? Was it Maryland, Rhode Island, or New York? And the answer is Maryland. The bill was actually an act of tolerance for faiths that closely resembled that of the majority of residents to the colony, Catholic or Protestant. Question number seven, true or false? St. Francis Xavier attempted to establish Christianity in East Asia and Japan. And the answer is true. In July 1549, Francis Xavier arrived in Japan hoping to find success converting the Japanese to Christianity. 
1614, the government outlawed Christianity and expelled all European missionaries. Question number eight. Who was the youngest non-martyred saint? Was it St. Dominic Salvio, St. Maria Goretti, or St. Thomas Aquinas? And the answer is St. Dominic Savio. St. Dominic is the patron saint of choir boys, the falsely accused, and juvenile delinquents. His feast day is May 6th. Question number nine. Who was the first pope to be televised? It was in 1949. Was it Pius XII, John XXIII, or Benedict XV? And the answer is Pius XII. March 25, 1949, Pope Pius XII, in his first speech prepared especially for television use in the United States, presented a message of thanks to those who contributed to the bishop's funds for the victims of war. Question number 10. From Luke chapter 11, in response to the disciples' request, Lord, teach us to pray, what did Jesus teach them? Was it the Our Father? Psalm 23? or the Holy Rosary? And the answer is the Our Father. Just a few verses later, Jesus says, everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Okay, that wraps up round number one. We're going to take our first break, but before we go to break, we're going to leave you with a bonus question worth 25 points. Here's the bonus question. What sacrilegious ceremony is associated with satanic worship? We'll give you the answer on the other side of the break. You're listening to Catholic Challenge 2.0 on the Living Bread Radio Network. St. Jerome said, Ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. That's why the Living Bread Radio Network opens up the Scriptures each and every day with their podcast, Liturgy of the Word. You'll hear the daily Mass readings and reflection along with sacred liturgical music, Stay in touch with the church with Liturgy of the Word podcast. Subscribe for free or listen directly from the Living Bread Radio app or at livingbreadradio.com. You can even ask Alexa to play Liturgy of the Word. Welcome back to Catholic Challenge 2.0 here on the Living Bread Radio Network. We just took our first break, and before we went to break, we left you with a bonus question. PJ, let's give our listeners the answer. All right. The question is, what sacrilegious ceremony is associated with satanic worship? The answer is Black Mass. It mocks the Holy Catholic Mass. We need to pray in reparation for the spiritual harm that is caused each time a Black Mass is held. Yes, amen. Okay, uh, 25 points if you got that answer correct. Now we're going to move into round number two. Here we go. Question number one. Which English king separated himself and his people from the Catholic Church over the question of divorce and papal authority? Was it Edward the Seventh, George the Fifth, or Henry the Eighth? And the answer is Henry the Eighth. The divorce was requested because the marriage had not produced a male heir, which could cause future chaos in England. Question number two. According to Catholic beliefs, The bishops continue the work of what group? The Sadducees, the Apostles, or the Prophets? And the answer is the Apostles. The Apostles stopped being commissioned in the first century, so apostolic succession now continues with the bishops, the successors of the Apostles. Question number three. October 7th is a special feast day of the Blessed Mother. For many years, it was known as Our Lady of Victory. What is this feast of Our Lady known as today also? Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of the Rosary, or Our Lady of Lourdes?
And the answer is Our Lady of the Rosary. This feast commemorates the defeat of the Muslims at the Battle of Lepanto. Question number four. According to the Bible, where did God give Moses the Ten Commandments? On Mount Sinai, Mount Everest, or Mount Zion? And the answer is Mount Sinai. The Ten Commandments have been recognized by non-Jewish and non-Christian cultures as representing the basic principles of moral life. Question number five, true or false? The day after Halloween is All Saints Day. And the answer is true. The root word of Halloween, hallow, means holy. The suffix een is an abbreviation of evening. It refers to the eve of all hallows, the night before All Saints Day. Question number six. Which biblical woman said, wherever you go, I go. Your people are my people and your God, my God. Is it Ruth, Martha, or Bathsheba? And the answer is Ruth. It's from Ruth 1, 16. Ruth was talking to her mother-in-law, Naomi. Question number seven. What city in the USA is the home up to the largest number of relics? Is it Morton Grove, Illinois, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or Maria Stein, Ohio? And the answer is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. St. Anthony Chapel in Pittsburgh is home to approximately 5,000 relics. The Shrine of All Saints in Morton Grove, Illinois houses more than 3,000 relics, and the Shrine of the Holy Relics in Maria Stein, Ohio holds 1,100 relics. Question number eight, true or false? The Pope can change Catholic dogma if he wishes. The answer is false. The term dogma means divinely revealed truth, proclaimed as such by the infallible teaching authority of the church, and hence binding on all faithful without exception, now and forever. Question number nine. At the eighth station of the cross, who does Jesus meet? Is it Simon Serene, his mother Mary, or the women of Jerusalem? And the answer is the women of Jerusalem. Jesus tells the women, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. Question number 10. In Hebrew, what does amen mean? Is it true, the end, or thanks God? And the answer is true. When one says amen in response to a prayer, it serves as an affirmation of agreement with the content of the prayer, in which case it is sometimes translated, so be it. Okay, that wraps up round number two. We're going to take our second break, but before we go to break, we're going to leave you with another bonus question worth 25 points. Here's your bonus question. In 1980, St. John Paul II said that this is, quote, the most splendid relic of the passion and the resurrection. To what was he referring? We'll give you the answer when we come back. You're listening to Catholic Challenge 2.0 on the Living Bread Radio Network. It's the first platform of its kind anywhere. It's great Catholic music. Your home for sacred hymns and contemporary favorites 24 hours a day. A great way to draw closer to the Lord through beautiful music. It's perfect to listen to at home with the kids at work or during your daily devotions. Listen any time of day at greatcatholicmusic.com. Download the free app or ask any Alexa-enabled device to play great Catholic music. Welcome back to Catholic Challenge 2.0 here on the Living Bread Radio Network. 
We just took our second break, and before we went to break, we left you with another bonus question. PJ, let's give our listeners the answer. All right, the question. In 1980, St. John Paul II said this is the most splendid relic of the Passion and the Resurrection. To what was he referring? The answer is the Shroud of Turin. The shroud survived a fire in 1532, but was burned at its folded corners when its silver reliquary began to melt. To date, one can see the patches applied to the shroud because of the burn marks. The patches have caused confusion in the testing of authenticity. Okay, tough question. If you got it right, you got 25 bonus points. We're going to move into round number three, but I want to remind you, if you have a question that you think we could use here on Catholic Challenge 2.0, you can send it to us at quiz at livingbreadradio.com. Send us your question and then keep listening. We might use your question on the air. All right, let's move into round number three. Question number one. Who was the Blessed Mother's father? Joachim, Joseph, or Jesse? And the answer is Joachim. The story of Mary's birth and details about her aging parents, Joachim and Anne, come from apocryphal writings known as the Proto-Evangelium of James the Lesser that was written by an unknown author. Question number two. Name the fourth glorious mystery of the Rosary. The Annunciation, the Assumption, or the Ascension. And the answer is the Assumption. From the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 974, the Most Blessed Virgin Mary was taken up body and soul into the glory of heaven, where she already shares in the glory of her son's resurrection. Question number three. Which work by St. Thomas Aquinas asserts the reasonableness of belief in God? Disputed questions on truth, the Summa Theologica, or Confessions. And the answer is the Summa Theologica. Upon his death in 1274, Aquinas left his chief theological handiwork incomplete. It was later completed by his close friend, Fra Rinaldo. Question number four, true or false? Vatican City has one of the highest crime rates in the world. And the answer is true. Pickpocketing and shoplifting are common offenses. And out of all these reported crimes, a staggering 90% of them are never prosecuted. Question number five. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are known as what? prophets, kings, or evangelists? And the answer is evangelists. Gallic Bishop Irenaeus identified the evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as the four pillars of the church and the four authors of the true gospels. Question number six. According to Matthew chapter 3, what must be separated from the wheat? Is it the weeds, the chaff, or the seeds? And the answer is the chaff. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Question number seven. There are two levels of the gravity of sin. One is venial, and the other is what? Is it mortal, criminal, or offensive? And the answer is mortal. In the first letter of St. John, chapter 5, we read, All wrongdoing is sin, but not all sin is deadly. The notion of a deadly or mortal sin is found in other parts of sacred scripture as well. Question number eight. What was the name of the abbey founded by St. Bernard in France? 
Is it Clairval, Clooney, or Fontenay? And the answer is Clairval. Disciples flock to the abbey in great numbers, desirous of putting themselves under the direction of St. Bernard. Even St. Bernard's father and brothers entered Clairval as religious. Question number nine. What was Archbishop Oscar Romero of El Salvador doing when he was assassinated? Was he traveling, celebrating mass, or sleeping? And the answer is celebrating mass. Archbishop Romero was nominated for the 1979 Nobel Prize of for Peace. The following year, Romero was assassinated at the hands of an unknown assailant while celebrating Holy Mass. Question number 10. Who wrote the Acts of the Apostles? Was it St. Paul, St. Luke, or St. Mark? And the answer is St. Luke. St. Luke probably accompanied St. Paul on several missionary journeys. He is a patron saint of physicians and artists. Okay, that wraps up round number three. We're moving right along. We're going to take our final break, but before we go to break, we're going to leave you with one more bonus question worth 25 points. Here's your bonus question. In C.S. Lewis's novel, The Screwtape Letters, the main character named Screwtape holds an administrative post in what bureaucracy? We'll give you the answer on the other side of the break. You're listening to Catholic Challenge 2.0 on the Living Bread Radio Network. This year marks 20 years that Living Bread Radio Network has been proclaiming the truth of Jesus Christ through our programs, podcasts, and greatcatholicmusic.com. We connect with you and countless numbers of faithful in Northeast Ohio, across the country, and around the world. Every day, we continue our commitment to share the gospel message. And your commitment to Living Bread Radio is invaluable. Go to livingbreadradio.com and click the Donate button. Be part of the next 20 years at livingbreadradio.com. Welcome back to Catholic Challenge 2.0 here on the Living Bread Radio Network. We just took our last break, and we left you with a final bonus question. PJ, let's give our listeners the answer. All right. In C.S. Lewis's novel, The Screwtape Letters, the main character named Screwtape holds an administrative post in what bureaucracy? The answer is hell. Screwtape holds an administrative post in the bureaucracy of hell and acts as a mentor to his nephew Wormwood, an inexperienced and incompetent tempter. Though very popular with Catholics, Lewis never converted to the Catholic faith. Okay, 25 points for that bonus question. Now we're going to move into the challenge round. It's a little bit different. So, PJ, let's give our listeners the rules. Okay, so the fourth and final round is the challenge round. Now this round increases in difficulty because no multiple choice answers will be provided. And each correct answer in this round is worth 30 points. Okay, here we go. Challenge round begins right now. Question number one. What did Salome demand from her father, Herod Antipas, in exchange for her dance of the seven veils? And the answer is the head of John the Baptist from Mark chapter six. We know that Salome's mother Herodias is the one who held a grudge against John the Baptist and asked for his head. Question number two. What is the fifth station of the cross? And the answer is Simon of Cyrenian helps Jesus carry the cross. Simon became a convert, a bishop, and a martyr. He was crucified around the year 100 AD. Question number three. What is the official Latin title of the Second Vatican Council's Pastoral Constitution on the church in the modern world? And the answer is Gaudium et Spes. Gaudium et Spes was promulgated by His Holiness Pope Paul VI on December 7, 1965. Question number four. From John chapter 18, which apostle betrayed Jesus? 
The answer is Judas Iscariot. There were two apostles named Judas. The other, Judas, was also named Thaddeus. Question number five. Who is the mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary? And the answer is Saint Anne. Although not named in the Bible, the story of the mother of Mary was developed in other sources until Saint Anne became one of the most popular saints of the Latin Church. Question number six. On which day do we celebrate the descent of the Holy Spirit on the Apostles? The answer is Pentecost from Acts 2. There appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues. We run out of time. PJ, let's give our listeners the final question. All right, the final question. The motto of the Order of St. Benedict, the Benedictines, is Ora et Labora. What does this translate to in English? And the answer is prayer and work. St. Benedict's rule prescribes periods of work for the monks, for idleness is the enemy of the soul. Benedict viewed prayer and work as partners and believed in combining contemplation with action. Okay, that wraps up the match. We had some tough questions today. I hope you did well, listeners. Remember, we're always learning new things about Jesus and his church. And if you keep listening to Catholic Challenge 2.0, you'll learn something new every time you listen. Thanks for joining us today and tune in next time for another edition of Catholic Challenge 2.0 on the Living Bread Radio Network. For my co-host PJ Chavez, I'm your host Barbara G. Praise be Jesus Christ. You've been listening to Catholic Challenge 2.0, a production of the Living Bread Radio Network in Canton, Ohio. For a podcast or archive of this program, go to livingbreadradio.com and join us next week for another edition of Catholic Challenge 2.0.